<clears throat> Good morning, guys. I just uh, turned up to. Um, it's a little little bit of a diddler going on, I suppose, down there, Port Albert Dock. First time I've been for about three weeks, four weeks now, since the river um, season. So, um, anyway, it's going to be a nice day, apparently. So, let's see how we get on today. We're just going to do the draw. So, I'll see you at the peg. Okay lads, uh, you see me, <laughs> clouds come over, um, a bit of blue sky in the in the distance. Anyway, I've drawn peg 19, uh, which is about two from the end. Apparently, um, there's a couple of, been a couple of fish up this end, so um, uh, they split the sections into two. So um, there's uh, six on this one and six on there, I think. Um, Anyway, as I say, it's uh, quite a nice day, even though I've got my uh, hoodie up. I've got um, a, bit of a, a bit of a chilly cold, but not, not that bad. Certainly a lot warmer than it has been. I think it's about 11 degrees, which, um, well, that's the forecast today. At the moment, it's probably about 8. So it's going to come up a couple of uh, degrees. Now, an interesting thing, um, there's a boat that just came in, a ship. I don't know if you can actually see it over there. Uh, the app usually means that um, salt water's have been let in, you know, quite a substantial amount of salt water. Whether that will affect the fish, you know, I don't know. Because um, it's brackish water anyway. That's why when we do catch the skimmers in the bream, there's no slime on them, you know, obviously, because uh, I think the salt must have clear, clear, cleaned them off. Um, at the moment, uh, the roach have been feeding mainly. Um, Steve O'Mara, who runs the, uh, the match, um, he's, he's won a couple on here lately, and uh, he's, you know, not big weights, sort of uh, around about 10 pounds. So that would be the sort of uh, target weight, I think, today. Um, and let's go to the bream moving and the skimmers uh, um, start showing, but otherwise it'll be mainly roach. So what I've done, I've set up um, two feeders, set up um, a 35 grammer uh, for a long distance, and then a 20 gram of the sort of inside. Um, yeah, I'm sure you know. Very good, yeah. So I'm using um, an old Shimano, uh, it's a Beastmaster, but um, it's very, you know, very good for skimmer and nutrition. Um, I got a reel here. Probably haven't seen that one before, but uh, basically. Uh, I, I brought it from Thailand, cost me a tenner, and it's as good as uh, the die with two, three hundred pound jobs. Um, trust me, you know, it makes you wonder where all the profit goes, obviously, uh, I suppose the import and um, so forth. But anyway, I'm not going to talk about too much about that. Uh, the other reel I, I got is a Cadence, which I found quite good, and they're quite reasonable, about 35 good, I think. Um, that's on my second... Uh, rod and that's the close-in work um you never know i might use the other rod for close-in as well it all depends um another thing that i've set up uh, well i got ready to put on and that is um a window feeder um i don't know if i've told the story before but i was in ireland a couple of years ago um first time i've gone back to in for for oh, 20 odd years and anyway, um, of course, being out of touch, I didn't have a clue really. Uh, anyway, I was fishing this um, one section, and uh, a young lad next to me, um, God, he was putting a feeder out oof, much further than I've ever thrown in my life. Anyway, he, he beat me, of course, uh, going that distance. And um, uh, anyway, I spoke to him after the match. I said, uh, let me, I said, let's have a look at feeder. And he showed me it was a window feeder. And he said, like, uh, they're called the Bob Nut feeders. I said, oh, okay. Anyway, as I packed up, I go over, so over the brow of the hill, and who should I bump into? Is Bob, Bob Nutt. <laughs> I said, oh, hey, Bob. I said, what's these uh, feeders, these, um, you know, window feeders that you're all using? Oh, he said, yeah, have you got one? I said, no. I said, I'll bring you some tomorrow. So the next day, I turned up, and Bob turned up with a bag full of them. <laughs> and I still got them. Well, I've got about three or four left after, you know, after all those years ago. How long ago was that? Probably about four or five years ago, I think it was. So, uh, um they do snap off now and again because they're quite heavy but they don't have to go out at some distance but what i like about them of course is that uh, you know you can put a minimum amount of uh, feed in there which um, 
uh, it helps sometimes, you know, when you don't want to put too much in the feeder. Um, so it's a great idea, a great invention. I think it was Bob was the first one to come up with that idea. I think other people are doing it now, but um, anyway, good old Bob. Great angle. He's still doing well now, I noticed some I've seen. He's, uh, he's always in the frame on his um, local circuit over in Norfolk. I haven't spoken to him for a while, but I used to, you know, he used to phone me up um, about a year ago during the COVID when they weren't much to do. We used to have a little chats. So, um, anyway. So, anyway, the match is going to start now at, uh, well, they said quarter past ten, but uh, i got a feeling they might bring it forward to ten o'clock. Um, only because it's just a feeder job, I think. I don't think anyone's setting the poles up. The only one I think is going to set a pole up is my mate Clive, who's on the end peg, on peg eight, down at the other end. So, um, anyway. So, show my bait now. I've got my um, got your red maggots, casters, corn, and i got my... Um, special brie mix well it's uh, actually i haven't put so much uh, fish meal in it this time it's more aniseed so uh, but it's um, a combination of um you know of, of those mixtures anyway um i started producing it again by the way lads if um, if you you know anyone wants to place an order go to gold medal ground baits uh, com, uh, .co.uk or dot com i think they both get there anyway and also i, I do it on ebay as well so you know um you can buy a, a pack for, i think five for 20 quid which is uh, not too bad. Okay, uh, apart from that, that's about it, really. Um, I'm not going to use a worm because obviously that's for bream. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on the roach. I, I, as I say, I got some corn because sometimes the corn can catch us bigger fish. Um, I'm on 11 bottoms um, and also uh, size um, 16 uh, cormic wide gape hooks. And that's my start off strategy. And should I go smaller or larger hook size? Depends, obviously, as the match develops. Um, and that's why I like to uh, keep my options open. And if I need to um, change the hook lengths and hook, I can do it within, you know, within seconds. So uh, that's an advantage. Right, I don't think I'm going to get through a lot of bait. As I said, I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of. Uh, uh, well, the fish being caught, but um, I've got a young lad next to me, he's won a few as well. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of his name, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, because I was talking, I don't know if you follow me on Facebook, but I, I was just I just brought a book out and um, about aliens, you know, um, UFOs, and basically, I got me interested in that subject only because. A couple of years ago, a couple of lads uh, were fishing and they went down to the Huntsville and um, anyway, they, they arrived a little late and uh, anyway, when they got there, they said they were followed by a UFO. Of course, they all thought they were behind me, them two. Um, Ken Ozzy and uh, James Smithson's their names. And, uh, but no, in all seriousness, they, they were followed for about 20 minutes and they always had an interest in them. And then, um, out of the blue, I was talking to a... A friend of mine, he said he's seen one, and my neighbour, they've seen one, and, and I started reading on it, and I mean, the amount of people that have actually spotted them, and I put an article, and I knew I knew it was going to happen, I put an article uh, or a post up on the uh, Matt uh, uh, Facebook page, and I said, uh, of any other anglers, um, you know, spotted UFOs while they're fishing, because there was a case up on the, one of the canals. One of the anglers actually got abducted, apparently, and uh, and um, you know they went, he, they put him onto the spaceship and done some uh, experiments on him. And I know it sounds all far fetched. It really, I, well, I thought it was, but uh, when I've delved into it and I've read about it, and uh, and I was interested to see if any other anglers, because you know you're fishing sort of out in the country sometimes, and you're on your own, and you know, you know. It's the ideal opportunity, isn't it, you know, to actually see something that you shouldn't be there. Anyway, I knew I'd get some ridicule, and uh, a couple of them said, oh, lay off the drugs and so on. So, anyway, uh, but that was just an interesting uh, thing, I thought. Uh, right, anyway, let's back to the fishing. Um, as I said, I did put that uh, I haven't had, uh, no, no, put it this way, people haven't admitted to seeing it. And once somebody said, I don't blame him, do you, Clive? I said, no, I suppose not. Because uh, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be uh, classified as a crank, do you, like me? <laughs> uh, well, we all got our little beliefs in that. So, you know, other interests outside fishing, I suppose. Anyway, let's get back to fishing. Um, I finished the Y this year. Uh, not on a high, but, um, well, you know, I didn't have some very good draws uh, this year, unfortunately. Um, I ended up with a couple of good weights, a couple of 40s and 50 pounds. Um, the last match, um, I, 
Oh, well, I battered the area of my section, but uh, I was third in the, in the whole zone, so uh, 48 pound I had. So, anyway, um, that was on the chub down the middle and day sunny inside. Anyway, the river's finished now, so it's uh, close season. So I'm going to start, as I said, I've started off on the dock to begin with. Um, probably do a few on here, a few on the Gloucester. Ready for then this river season, which opens in, um, obviously, uh, June 16th. Uh, I'll probably be up on the Wallach Raven. Uh, by the way, as well, um, I I put a little comment about the close season and what was people's thoughts, and it was overwhelmingly people were saying how dated it was. So I done a little bit of research on that and found out that the law goes back to 1878. That's when um, uh, the law was passed that there was going to be um, a close season, you know, and it, the idea was to preserve the fish and the plants and everything. But you know, to be quite honest. In them days, they didn't have the scientific um, knowledge that we got uh, uh, these, uh, these days. Well, I know for a fact, I mean, I've been fishing, what, 50 years, you know, 50, 60 years now, and, uh, and I've studied fish, as you know, uh, my job for 30 years was uh, an ichiologist, you know, study of fish. And the fish don't, don't start spawning until, like, end of May, June, in July even. You know, so they got the dates completely wrong when it comes to uh, having a close season. So anyway, I put a petition up. Um, I had to get five, uh, first of all, um, people to back me, which uh, they did overnight, basically. And then uh, I had a letter back then, uh, or email back from the government, saying uh, well, they're going to uh, put it forward now to another committee. And uh, But then I've had another email saying that um, apparently in 2020, uh, it was passed that they'd, they'd open uh, canals, um, and, and apparently some rivers, I don't know where, but uh, anyway, my um, petition is to abolish the close season altogether and leave it up to the riparian owners to decide if they want a close season and what time of the year, etc., which makes more sense to me. So I'm just waiting for that to come back, so uh, keep in touch on that one and I'll let you know um, basically uh, the developments and if I need you know some people to, uh, uh, well, uh, signatures, I'll, I'll um, let you know on the, this YouTube channel and on Facebook, of course. That's where my main uh, uh, posts go. Okay, right, <laughs> no further to do. I might just go and have a little walk, actually, and see uh, see what, the, what the, all the other anglers up to. Okay, see you in a bit. Here's Beefy. <laughs> Hello, Beefy. <laughs> and there's the end peg there. That's, uh, that's a favourite peg, that. I love that peg. The shallows up there, so uh, that's always a good... Um, a good spot. Beefy, he's always does well. He, lately he's been doing very well on you. So, um, anyway, I just thought I'd come and have a quick look. I'm on the next one now. And then I got Alan uh, below me. So, right. Yep. Peg 19. Okay, the match has started. <laughs> All in, is it? Yeah. Right. A quick chuck, a quick long chuck. Let's see where Alan's going first. Good start, I just took my thumb. <laughs> yeah. Good. Right, I haven't gone for a big chuck then, I've just gone for sort of a a thirty-five yard chuck because if they're going to be there I don't want to you know sort of 
go too far because it, it, it obviously it takes longer you know to bring the fish in so I'm just gonna clip that up there Just eyeing up, um, there's like a, a mound of sand there opposite me, so I got that as my target. By right, 21, I counted then, that's about 20, 21 foot. Use a taped up feeder. Obviously, I don't want the grommet to come out till it hits the bottom. Okay. During the summer, when you do this, um, you get indications as it's going down where the fish are obviously coming up in the water. That's a good indication to go on the waggler then. Um, I think about two years ago, three maybe, I can't remember now. <laughs> but um, we're catching a lot of fish on the wagon. At had 53 pounds in the one match. Roach. Did you notice I don't use. Um, rod rest because uh, when I'm road fishing I'm constantly moving it, twitching it and uh, and it's easier, you know, it's easier to hit the bites because roach, unlike bream with the uh, slam the tip round, roach will just sort of, you know, grab at it quickly. So you need to sort of strike it if you can when you, you know, almost any little indication. When I used to um, experiment uh, years ago, I should put a feeder into the into a tank, and um, it's surprising with a with the hook length how far the fish have got to go before the tip moves to get an indication. So you know, sometimes when you get a little movement on the tip, sometimes the fish have had to um, sort of swim a foot or more, you know. Right, I'm using um, the loop, a side loop. Put in um, a little sandwich of casters and maggots in. So it's going in the same spot every time now. I'll cut back now on the amount of uh, bait I'm putting in the ground bait. Um, 
take that into the feed and then what I'll do I'll just put mini ground meat in that it's a nice cup of chunks It usually takes um, a few minutes to start getting bites anyway. So there's a big vast uh, area of water here so um, the fish basically got to find you, you know. Unless you're lucky enough to actually fall straight on them at the very start, then, uh, you know. But that's not always a good um, sign because sometimes if you fall straight on the fish, you catch, you know, it's quick and then they'll, they'll disappear. Where, you know, if it takes longer to feed and start getting bites, then. Um, you find that uh, you can build your swim up and the swim actually gets stronger. You know, uh, most um, venues who fish, you know, big water venues is very similar really, you know. Is that out? Not yet, no of you? No. She asked me if I had any signs of bites yet, not yet. A lot of the guys uh, use a braid and um down here, which is you know good because uh you get more of a more of a bite if you like, but I f I don't prefer a braid. I prefer nylon, um, only because you know when I strike at least. I, what's that? Oh, you just had a fish then. All oh, right, okay. So just had a fish then on the end next to the bridge. What was it? Roach or skimmer? Roach. Okay. Yeah, so I, I find that with braid, you know, you, you do bump a lot of fish. At least with nylon, uh, you know, monofilament, the line stretches a bit. So there's less chance of um, bumping a fish off. But that's my preference. I mean, you know, a lot, as I say, a lot of guys use uh, braid these days. One roach then. Shy by that was a single magnet. It's 
a lot of pike around here this time of year. Well, not this time of year, because they're they, they spawning, don't they? They spawn early pike too. So hopefully they might not uh, be so active. They're more interested in spawning perhaps, hopefully. I didn't get a bite then, but I just twitched it, but um, you know, because I'm still killed in the swimmer. Any signs? Yeah, so he just had a bite, so... Right. I'll put the sunglass on, because there's a bit of a glare on the water.
actually do, I, you probably can't see what I'm doing, but when you first chuck out, there's a bit of a um, bow in the line, if you like, going down to the feeder. So I'm just bringing the rod back slowly, you know, gathering up that line, so I've got a more of a direct contact to the feeder there. Any small bend in the tip, um, obviously, uh, you know, so I can look at the smallest indication, basically. surprise me sometimes when you do that you feel the fish on the end because you know it just goes to show you sometimes they, they, got, they pick the bait up without moving the tip Turn off now, come back. Where, uh, if I start catching, I'll come back so you actually discuss, you know, a few other methods and uh, techniques, okay? Just starting to pick up a couple of fish now, about three or four now. I'm um, just starting to get little bites already. Very, very finicky. I just tried to double mag it and um, I had a fish, a small one. I put a single on and uh, shot it bigger.
Okay, I've just um, shortened the hook length a little bit, only because um, I missed another bite then, so... It might be further along the tail, but we'll see now. That's right. I mean, they're only small at the moment. So my hook, my hook length is, um, is only about 8 inches now. It's almost like a boat rig as well, uh, when, you know, when you shorten it. When you've got a longer, a longer tail, they, they can drop the bait before, you know, it, it, um, you know, without hooking themselves, so to speak. Sun's trying to come out now, I see. Use a little bit of corn as well because that might bring a uh, bigger fish in. So I put a, a good pinch of corn in then. As soon as you attract them, I, I'd probably try it on the hook as well, but um, if the bream or skimmers show up, uh, then they'll take the corn. The roach like corn, you know, uh, the trouble is you, you will miss a lot of bites trying to hook a corn.
Right, I'm going to go up to a small hook because I, I missed another bite then. So I'm going to go down to an 18.
okay, I, um, I've actually lent them the hook length as well. Um, <clears throat> only because the fish are finicky at the moment. So I've gone to a smaller hook, along the hook length. That's why they're finicky, because they're, they're little fingerlings. The way to eliminate that, of course, is go back up to a bigger hook and uh, say double manga or something. So, let's see now.
still getting those little finicky bites, so I'm going to go back up to a bigger hook. Just a double maggot in it. going to get anywhere with them, am I really? <laughs> okay, come back to me in a minute. Okay, I've just gone back up to a, bit, a 16 hook, double magnet, so let's see what happens. Just the one nugget got sucked on the end then, so again, small fish. down to catches the bigger fish than <laughs>
That's what I catch in the small ones, I know. He's having the same problem next to me, he's catching those little fish. Then the guy on the end is uh, netting a few fish. So that makes a difference, he's the bigger fish you're going to catch. head down and try and catch as many as I can. I think that's about the only thing we can do. I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay, well, um, things have turned around a little bit. Uh, the guy next to me can skim us out. So, you, um, you know, the bigger fish are going to make a big difference today. Just let in the milk. Well done, Alan. Well done. Yeah, I'm just got to get my head down now. I think the difference uh, there is that I'm sort of you know, chucking on a regular basis, but he just sit in and waiting. That's what's happened, the skimmers have come in, where I'm getting pestered by little roach. It's obviously, you know, the skimmers are coming up. I 
I think that I might have to do is uh, just sit and wait, I think. As skimmers, like small bremen, they, you know, they come and graze. You know, you get a few, they'll go, go off and then they come back. So we constantly bring it in and out, like, you know, it's not the way to catch those. So keep it road. Back oh, it's getting rather cold now. <laughs> Just put a jacket on. Right, well, it's worked. Um, I'm sitting on my hands a little bit, waiting for skimmers to turn up rather than catch rope. So I've had a couple now, so, uh, but I don't know if I can call them up though, because they've had an early, early start on me. I'm going to go a little bit further as well. So basically, 
so I'm sitting on my hands waiting for the tip to go wrong. Typical skimmer fish man.
Can you approach it, please? See? Small skimmer then. <laughs> Very small.
Okay, uh, the match is over, just finished now. Um, well, I had a couple more skimmers, but um, you know, I'm trying to catch up with the, those couple of lads there who um, got them earlier. Uh, it's very difficult, very difficult. And mind, I enjoyed it, and uh, <laughs> um, we'll see you now anyway on the way in. Um, I don't know what they got on down the other end. Um, sorry, he was catching down there. Um, so, we'll see you now. All right, see you the way in now. Yeah, yeah, so at eight pounds three, um, seven nine below me, and he's just had um, ten pounds next to me, ten eleven, as I said. He had uh, he had those few fish before me, and I couldn't catch up. And I think this uh, um, same guy above him, I think, was you know. Okay, yeah, I first out the money by the look of it. Um, it was um, there was a ten uh, nine pound. No, there was a, a a thirteen, a ten, a nine, and then me. Okay, <laughs> right. Okay, see you on the next one, hopefully, and uh, either back down here or up at the gloss. We'll see yet. Okay, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.